Hey guys, I am Katie. And I am Alexis. <laughs> this is and the Check Your Aesthetic podcast. I was going to say, and what is this? Didn't seem oh. like you were going to say. We, If you are still here after that <laughs> intro, then good. Because yeah. this is a great, we strap in. This is a great episode. It actually is. Why'd you get your like, strap in? That's... I don't know. But we have a guest on today. I've realized something about our podcast, listening to other podcasts. We like never even say what the episode is going to be about until like 15 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I'm going to share what it's about and then we're going to talk about things that you don't care about. So please don't leave because mm-hmm. we had Ellie Lapp from Ellie Lapp Creative on and she talked about working in social media management at Disney. And also freelancing, so. Yes, and managing everything. So if you guys have, like, a part-time job or a full-time job and your thing on the side, then. <laughs> if you got a side really, piece. And if you got a side yeah, hoe. If you have a side piece. Um, but no, so I, before we started recording, oh, one thing I wanted to say also is that while we were recording, I realized that my oh. highlight looks like I'm profusely sweating. I'm not. I just have highlight. Um, so there you go. Um, but also, before we started recording this, um, I had to tell Katie a devastating, um, Well, piece you didn't of tell it to me yet. You didn't tell I, me. No, I said I had to. So I haven't yet. Um, Tom Felton. <laughs> girl. <laughs> has a girlfriend. Oh, oh, that actually is really... <laughs> That's actually, like, horrible. Like, actually, if you told me that, like, like, I would actually check on you if I saw that on, like, Instagram. Like, that's bad. It's, like, it's not, like, 110% confirmed, but he went to dinner with Ed Sheeran, and Ed Sheeran, like, on some podcast, yeah, on some podcast, Ed Sheeran was, like, yeah, I went to dinner with Tom Felton and his lovely girlfriend. Ed Sheeran is actually so gross. Oh, do you not get are no, you not on agree, Ed Sheeran like, hate TikTok? No. Well, I'm on like Ed Sheeran meme TikTok. I'm on Ed Sheeran hate TikTok. I literally hate Ed Sheeran. You know, I I uh, I wish I had my iPad right here. Ed Sheeran is on the cover of my business book. Like my school book. He's <laughs> on the cover. Ed Sheeran is a businessman. <laughs> literally, he's like I'm pretty sure he's like shaking someone's hand or maybe saying like hi to someone. But he's just like, <laughs> yep. I hate Ed Sheeran. So. If you also hate Ed Sheeran, then comment down below on this podcast. Or actually, if you're on YouTube, you actually can comment down below. Yes, comment. I hate another Ed reason Sheeran. to watch us on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, comment. I hate yeah, Ed Sheeran and so, boost us in the algorithm. Anyway, so yeah, I have I have not told anyone. That was like a few <laughs> days ago, actually, that I found out. You've about just been that. crying like every night, and I just was like. <laughs> Like, I didn't even, and then people, because I found out about it on a TikTok, and then people in the comments were, like, very divisive. Like, people were either, like, I'm devastated, or people were, like, if you're sad, you're a loser. Like, Okay, yeah, I have something very... that I can say that I think will make you feel better. Are, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. You have a boyfriend. Is it Harry's... <laughs> you oh. have, no, you have a serious <laughs> boyfriend. <laughs> An extremely serious boyfriend. <laughs> so this would have never been an option for you anyway. I thought But also Harry say, Styles does have a girlfriend. That's that's what I thought you were gonna yeah, say. Yeah, and there were some pictures that came out of his girlfriend. butt crack and with his girlfriend and you could see his butt crack and it was just too much because it was like pictures well, of him saw... kissing her and then like pictures of his butt crack. It's just too much. That's a lot. Um it was a lot no, to I saw pictures of them like on a boat. And yeah, he looks like a child like and like out. yeah. Oh. I saw ones where he looks like a child like asking his mom if he can like go swimming. Oh. Cuz she yeah, looks like annoyed. I, well, they were like making out in most of these pictures. Oh. And it was devastating, but it's okay. Honestly, like Oh, he that did is... announce. Speaking of Harry Styles, he announced that his tour is happening, so I will be oh. there. Oh my god. Um cuz I do still have those tickets that yep. were from God knows like, literally it was supposed to happen in like summer last year like yeah right Mm -hmm. and it's happening in october i think mine's like october 29th or something so i need to find an outfit for that but um 
Um, yeah, so one that's of exciting. my friends, one of my friends uh, from high school said that she wants to purchase me a cameo of Tom Felton, and can you hear that motorcycle? It's. I was about to say it hadn't been here, and there it was. Yeah. Um, I think it was actually right at the end, um, but you were talking. Um, but so, yeah, she wants to purchase me a cameo, and That's then we started so talking about... Huh? It's, like, t- over $200, so she's like, for your wedding gift, I'm like... Perfect. I was about to say, whenever um, you get married, I, w- <laughs> I will organize that we will all chip in, and we will get, like, oh, a yeah. very long, like, <laughs> 10-minute video of him. <laughs> like, that is, like, all I... Literally all I want. Like, oh do, I don't... I, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want, like, an hour of, like, a video of Tom Felton just talking to me. Yeah, actually, FaceTime. No, not FaceTime. I could... <laughs> no! <laughs> Quickly, dude! You'd instant, literally be like... Instant regret. That's not happening. Um, yeah, Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Alexis. I would, like, literally have, like, a seizure, I think. Um, but, no, I said that at our wedding, if... that Mine and Austin's wedding, if... Uh, Tom Felton showed up that like I don't care how much time Austin and I have been together it would be over poor Austin and he's like I understand oh my god Austin he's, he's on board good yeah. lord mm-hmm. so I don't Tom think Felton. he's on board I really don't think he's on board I wouldn't say but <laughs> yeah Probably I not, just I, I that's oh my god well I'm single and the Harry Styles is in not so that doesn't feel too good for me mm-hmm. um but actually, that for real, as if I actually think I'm going to marry I feel like our entire podcast is just like, sometimes we give a good advice, and then in between that, we just talk about stuff that people don't care about. Yeah, I don't know anybody who would care about what we've just talked about for the past six m- Well, me. Me. And so. then, so that's two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so enough good. for me. Good enough um, for me. I feel yeah. like... I feel like I should edit the pictures of Harry Styles butt crack into the YouTube video, but I don't know if I could put but- a butt crack on YouTube without getting like. Demonetized. I think I'm gonna pu- I'm pulling them up. Well, first I'm just of like all, circling that. Back, is like... first of all, I don't think we're monetized. So. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't remind me. Doesn't oh. hurt to add it. There's like a lot of pictures of his butt crack. Okay, here it is. Good. You could just like see his butt. Like, see? You can, like, see his butt. Oh, God. Yep. Anyway, that's them. Rude. Okay. <laughs> Rude. Yeah, how dare you have a relationship? Honestly. Yeah. No, I'm happy for Tom Felton. I want him to be happy. <laughs> the pictures that come up when you search Harry Styles butt crack are... <laughs> God. It's really a mixed bag. <laughs> it's really something else. Okay. Anyway, um... What else do we have to share with everybody? I don't know. I feel like we should just get into it. Um, yeah, we probably should. Everybody yeah. probably wants us to be quiet. Yes. Um, so Ellie, I think we kind of already talked about it, but Ellie came on and she is someone that we have been friends with for a long time, as I mm-hmm. said, um, right when so you guys haven't heard this yet, but I said that we've <laughs> wanted her to come on for a while. Um, but yeah, so she is the social media manager for Disney Canada. She yeah. manages like 14 different accounts, I think she said, um, yeah. which is insane. And yeah, she just had a bunch of different uh, insights. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Kitty, you have anything else to say about that? No, I just cannot wait for you guys to hear. <laughs> Absolutely cannot. It sounds like I'm being sarcastic. I actually can't. She was an amazing yes, guest. Yes, we actually So yes. get your notebooks out if you would like to be a social media manager. And yeah, let's just get into it. Hi, Ellie. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. We're so excited to have you. It's seriously, I feel like you're somebody that we've had on our list for a while. So we're so excited yeah. to finally have oh you. Oh my on. gosh. That is so nice. I am so excited to be here. As I said, um, right before we started recording, this is my first podcast. So I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. I know. I... Where's your virginity? <laughs> Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting off with a bang, ladies. Yes. Girl, I real also realized, so as you guys all can tell, and as we just told Ellie, we're YouTube videos now, and I was just sitting there during the whole intro being like, <laughs> like, I really yeah, need honestly, to watch. 
Sometimes, like, we already talk about how we always forget that we're recording a podcast. Like, we just talk normally and forget yeah. that we're doing that. But then now I'm going to forget that we're recording a podcast and that it's video. So I'm just going to be saying and doing it. Yeah, like, I need to, like, watch literally. my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. It's just so fun. Totally. So many fun new things. <laughs> um, but, yes, Ellie is on today. If you guys do not know, she's from Ellie Lap Creative. I'm sure you've seen her Instagram. She's so talented. And it has a YouTube channel, as we just found out just now. Yes. Love that. <laughs> it's Go just for fun. It's just for fun. YouTube. I don't want people thinking I'm like a YouTuber here. <laughs> Honestly, though, what if you were? Uh, Influencer. What if I was? Yeah, who knows? You have a few videos with like 10,000, like 11,000 views. That's like influencer stuff. I feel like I need to like briefly explain this because like a couple of the videos are like more serious, but they're all pretty much just like vlogs of me and my friends doing random stuff. But when I titled them with Queen's University, which is my university mm-hmm, I went to, mm-hmm. um, which is like mm-hmm. a fairly big and kind of popular university, those mm-hmm. are the ones that actually got views because they oh. would come up when people would search Queen's. Like, they're not searching like, oh, Ellie's weekend in my life, but they're searching like weekend <laughs> right, at Queen's, Queen's or yeah, like parties totally. at Queen's and then they like watch my videos. So <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fun. Oh my gosh. That, I, yeah. Great marketing. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they should uh, Check them out, I guess, if you are are uh, from canada I, I i bet you guys have like 0.1 percent listeners from canada from though. canada I okay i don't idea. know though we haven't i haven't looked at our breakdown in a while but like it's not just america there you, yeah you you not. listen and you are from canada so we Maybe have people bring from like some madrid new viewership and, like, guatemala <laughs> yeah. yes canadian. we're really tapping into oh, our canadian whoa. audience this week yes we love the canadians yeah yeah. Absolutely have to love it. Love it. <laughs> have to love it. Um, have you guys ever been but, to Canada? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm from Vermont, okay. so I am, like, literally basically right. from, in Canada. Yeah. I went to Quebec in eighth grade. No, yeah, oh, eighth nice. grade on a, a French trip. And to be completely honest, oh, yeah. I think I've every already... Every single... <laughs> I feel like I've already shit-talked in... it on the podcast, but it's just like... I don't oh, my God. Shit. Really? I must not have listened to that one. I, I swear, like, every class trip you went on, like, as a Canadian school, like, the grade 8 trip was, like, yeah. going to Quebec City. Like, that was the thing. Well, That's we where went, we went to. Yeah. That's we so went funny. in, like, it was the winter, so it was frigid, and we're all from Louisiana, <laughs> and it was honestly just, like, I, I don't know. It was just kind of crusty. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, but okay Quebec like, like people in Canada don't really like Quebec that much it's yeah like I would have yeah comments. I would have rather get like there's so much beautiful like um scenery in Canada I would have rather go see like mm-hmm. cool outdoorsy things than Quebec I don't know it's weird vibes it is there. nice and it's cool like French city but yeah, yeah I don't know it's not my favorite place I don't think Canada, it's the best I don't think it's the best like representation of Canada as a whole mm-hmm. yeah it you go there to get like a, a like French culture not like typical canadian yeah i guess i like actually forget that canada exists though like all the time (laughs) (laughs) i was talking about this with um um a couple friends like from the states before and we were just saying like in canada we know everything about american politics like culture like everything Mm -hmm. is just like we learn american history in school but you guys would never learn canadian history like ever no (laughs) no I think I just think of Canada as, like, literally a part of the United States because it's, like, connected. That is Mm -hmm. probably the most idiotic thing that I've ever said. I'm probably going to get flamed for that. (laughs) No, no. I I I kind of feel like they're, like, one and the same in my brain, so. For me, yeah. I think, like, especially culture-wise, like, I feel more connected to Canada than I do (laughs) the South. Like, oh, I, I thought you were going to say the United States. No, I was like, no, 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 no. What? Me too. Yeah, I'm like, as girl, a Vermonter, we'll no, take as you a in. Vermonter, come on no, up here. As a, Ver- as a Vermonter, I feel more connected, like, with Vermont. I feel we are the same as Canada than we are as the South. Like, Vermont and the South, like, culture wise, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> that not is so the funny. same, like, literally at all. So Maybe that's why I didn't like quebec because it's culture shock oh i think a hundred percent and it was probably too cold for you so it was it was <laughs> the middle of winter and we went to some like winter festival carnival thing yeah 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 weird <laughs> vibes there too i don't know oh <laughs> what a great God, idea to bring so kids funny. from it's louisiana it was a weird trip i like bought snow boots i still have them but oh like i've God, never used that's them that's so funny other than there it's i just can't weird even vibes. imagine not owning snow boots like that's insane literally <laughs> I only wore them on that one trip. 
That's the only time. And then where else did I go in the winter? No, that's it. That's the one thing. <laughs> yep, that's the place. Oh, I went Good. to France, but I didn't need snow boots. Anyway, so that's um, our discussion okay, of Canada. Okay, so since we've been talking for five <laughs> minutes, let's have Ellie introduce herself. And <laughs> what, do you, what do you do, <laughs> Ellie? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. Um, so I am from Huntsville, Ontario, which is a really small, like, cottage town community. Like, it's where people have their cottages and stuff. It's really small. But um, I'm going to be living in Toronto in the fall. I actually lived there last fall as well, but just moved home for the summer. Um, and I now work at Disney Canada, which is really fun and exciting. Yay. I think this is my seventh month working there, so I'm still, like, on the newer side. Um, but mm-hmm. on the side of that, I also do freelance graphic design. So I've built up a little niche of clients over the past probably, like, six years. I started um, right at the beginning of university, kind of. And have just been kind of steadily building my client base ever since and now I'm trying to balance that with full-time work and it's an adjustment that's mm-hmm. for sure but <laughs> well I think we'll get yeah, into that definitely later, so. yeah definitely and then you're also a uh, youtuber <laughs> no I'm not <laughs> please don't forget <laughs> okay these are like like my doing like YouTube videos is just a hobby um so my degree in university <laughs> was in film and media so mm. I've just kind of enjoyed editing movies and like that kind of stuff um and that's kind of it like I I promise I'm not like taking this too seriously but um (laughs) I also played basketball I coach basketball oh my Um, gosh I love going to the beach you have just all jack of all trades yeah for real (laughs) I I think of other like fun things I could say but (laughs) it to make you feel better as you probably have heard from the podcast I did have a YouTube channel and when and I was in <laughs> I middle school, that. but I, um, I also took a lot of media film studies classes and I didn't major in it cause I created my own major. So like part of my major was media film. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love like editing videos. That's why like I do all those like reels and stuff, just like day yeah. of, like clips from my day. Yeah, you're great I just love it. it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm a professional, but it's fun. So I know what oh, you mean. I'm not about, either. I like yeah. to like tell people, I'm like, I'm a film major and I'm like <laughs> editing on iMovie half the time. Like, yeah, I have the skills to like edit on Premiere and Final Cut and stuff. But like, if I'm just doing something like quick and dirty, I'm like, yeah, iMovie, hello. It takes forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but I feel like I, I like to get my fix of editing videos. Anytime anybody yeah. at work needs a video edited, I'm like, I'll do it. I'll yeah. Do it. I love yep. it. Especially anyway, I feel like so. probably for us who all do like predominantly static stuff it is like a fun little change yes very true um so with like social media and graphic design and since you said that you started with your major in film how did you get into transitioning to graphic design and social media and all of that yeah so I always knew I wanted to do some kind of like digital work maybe like with computers and stuff I actually went into first year I went to Queens if anyone who is from Canada is listening um and I actually went into a program called computing in the creative arts which I thought was gonna be really cool and like learn programming and stuff which I did and I actually enjoyed it I learned I really liked the web development and that kind of programming but the rest of it was very just like math based and boring to me and I'm like I need something more creative I can't do this for four years so I switched into film and media um and again that is like very predominantly film classical film based a lot of film theory and that kind of stuff and I really kind of like crafted and tweaked my degree to my own like interests and stuff so I took all the electives I could I took writing for social media I took um creative uh careers or something like that like all these kind of like Mm -hmm. niche more digital advertising ones less of the classical film stuff um and it really kind of came out with something that I felt like I could use in the type of jobs I was looking for um but a lot of my graphic design training actually came from volunteer stuff on campus not necessarily classes so I worked as a graphic designer and a publications editor for this like student run um media business on campus that like they would live stream the sports games and they did the yearbook and like that kind of stuff which was really fun um and I was the marketing lead for TEDx Queens U so you know like TED Talks you can do like they have like ones for different areas and I'd be like TEDx New York or whatever they have like small Mm -hmm. ones too so our school had one and I was the marketing lead on that which also 
I was already doing the graphic design stuff, but that kind of gave me a good intro and like feet on the ground experience into doing social media and like digital advertising and marketing mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff, which mm-hmm. I really enjoyed. Um, so I kind of knew that I wanted to go into that um, through kind of like clubs and stuff, I guess, that I had tried. Awesome. I love that. I really think that like one of the things that I want everybody listening to always know is like it doesn't matter what you major in. I mean, like yeah, in some yeah, way no, it does, I totally but like, agree. yeah, it's not like you are boxed in and extracurriculars. Like that's how I got literally yeah. all of my experience. Yeah. Pretty much none from my classes. Love yeah, you though. Any, yeah. Half experience. my resume like, is like volunteer stuff or yeah. stuff I honestly like created myself. Like stuff yeah. I like made my own positions for. Like whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah my mom always point. says that like experience is experience. It doesn't have to be like you got a specific degree in that thing. Like. If you yeah. have some type of experience that's relevant, put it on your resume and it could get you Totally. A yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Um, okay. So as you said, you work with Disney Canada. That is so cool. Um, so how did you get that job? And tell us kind of about like what you do, what your day-to-day is working there. Yeah. So getting the job with Disney was honestly such a whirlwind. I was previously working for a woman um, based out of LA actually just doing like part-time graphic design and I was just looking for a bit of a change and for more full-time like structured work environment Mm -hmm. Um, so I was kind of just starting to get back on the job hunt and a friend of a friend reached out to like my friend saying hey um, there's this really great position opening up with Disney do you know anyone who would be interested in it because she works at a marketing agency that works closely with Disney so I guess they had like reached out and this position actually didn't really exist before so they just were getting swamped because um Disney just had basically rolled out Disney plus and Mm -hmm. for anyone I don't think you you guys have it in the states but we have Disney plus star which is basically Hulu for Canada and it's integrated into Disney plus because Canada doesn't have Hulu so it's basically like a whole other niche of Disney plus that um, they were starting up and basically they were just swamped and they need to bring someone on and they needed to do it pretty quickly. So because of that, mm-hmm. they didn't do like a full on search where they like put open applications. They just did it internally, I guess, saying like, do you know anyone who do you know? Yes. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So like, I just am so grateful for, you know, like that, um, there's like a graphic going on. It's like girls who say your name in a room of opportunities. Like I yeah. truly feel like that speaks to me. Like my friends were like, yes, she'd be so good for that. She would love it. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I just am so thankful that I have friends who like recognize me for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, so I got in touch with the girl who reached out and I had never even met her before, but we hopped on a zoom call and she prepped me for this interview. Like no other, again, like I'm so grateful for her as well. We mm-hmm. went over the type of questions I'd be asked, who would be interviewing me, what would be great things to bring up in the interview, all that kind of stuff. And I put my resume in Monday, had an interview Thursday, had another interview the next Monday, and then got the job on a Tuesday. So it happened wow. like really fast. Yeah. And I was like kind of freaking out like the whole time being like, oh my God, wait, is this actually happening? Like what? Right. Mm-hmm. Am I prepared um, for this? Like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like just so lucky for some reason I just felt like everything fell into my lap in the perfect way like the job description was exactly what I was looking for it's at this huge company that obviously would be kind of a dream to work at for anyone who's ever been interested in the entertainment industry Mm -hmm. and yeah like a young up-and-coming like team that kind of stuff so it really just was an awesome fit and I guess they like felt that too because they got offered the position um so yeah after I think I started working there two weeks after I put my resume in, which was like pretty That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as for my day to day, so my position title is a digital marketing coordinator. And basically we run the social media pages for Disney and they're like encompassing uh, brands. So we do the pages for Disney Studios, which is any kind of um, theatrical titles. So that could be like any Pixar movies. Um, Cruella just came out like live action like really big mm-hmm. theatrical um, releases like typical stuff you think of when you think of Disney and then we do Disney Plus which encompasses this thing called Star I was talking about so that's like original TV shows documentaries um, like we have How I Met Your Mother on there we have The Simpsons like a bit more oh, okay. mature stuff as well like TV shows right. basically that you could find on Hulu as well mm-hmm. um, and then we 
Disney also owns 20th Century Studios, so what was previously 20th Century Fox, so that's just like another movie studio. We do that, and then we also do the stuff for Marvel, which is my personal favorite. I love Marvel stuff, so that really excited me. Um, so that's kind of interesting because they all have different kind of like voices and each mm-hmm. of their social media presence is like slightly different because they're all different brands. So we manage all four of those and we do Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. And then also on Facebook, we have French pages because Canada is bilingual. Mm-hmm. So we do French pages. Yeah. So it's a lot. kind of a lot. I believe there's <laughs> yeah. 14 social pages and then three YouTube channels. So it's a lot, but it's really fun. Um, I guess like day to day we release trailers when there's new trailers that come out. We promote shows and movies and stuff that are new to the platform. We run contests. We like create memes and that kind of content for our Disney Plus page, which is a bit more Mm -hmm. like casual, mature audience. We try to create like memes or that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we like brainstorm concepts for campaigns in like the upcoming months and that kind of stuff. So it's it's kind of a lot, but it's really fun and exciting. Do you? That sounds like so much. I have a question. <laughs> do you get to see trailers before other people do? Like, before they come um, out? Sometimes. So, <laughs> it, it's it's a little tricky with, um, especially with stuff like Marvel, which are really confidential. We don't always get to do that. <laughs> I was but, about to say, I'm thinking of Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait to see that. I know. But sometimes, sometimes we do get to see movies in advance, and depending on the trailer, um, depending on, like, priority and confidentiality sometimes we do but not always yeah marvel stuff is crazy everybody Mm -hmm. goes a little crazy over all that yeah yeah seriously okay so would you say that like man since you have so much going on would you say that that's the hardest part of your job or what is there a different aspect that is challenging or what would be the hardest part would you say Yeah, so luckily, um, running those pages is me, and then I have, like, a team lead as well, so there's two of us. It's predominantly me that does the posting, but she does a lot of the scheduling and planning and stuff, um, and she'll obviously help me out if it's, like, a really busy day, that kind of thing. Um, But it definitely was a big learning curve, learning how to handle scheduling. Like, sometimes there's, like, 30 posts in one day. Sometimes there's maybe, Mm -hmm. like, 10, but, you know, there can be busy days, so... Um, kind of learning how to juggle that was definitely a learning curve. Um, one of the hardest parts probably is when there is a trailer drop, which is like what it's called when there's a day that like a big trailer is going out, it can be really hectic. And that's probably like the most stressful part of my job because the, we actually get the majority, like pretty much all our trailers from the U S because, um, the Disney like head studios are in the U S and say they're debuting a trailer at 8 AM. So we're up, we're ready to go for 8 a.m., we're online, and they used to, I guess, before I worked there, send trailers out in advance, but there's been, like, a few mishaps where they got leaked or that kind of stuff, so now, yeah. I think that was, like, a couple of years ago, but now they send stuff out, like, the second it goes live on their pages, so we're instantly playing mm-hmm. catch-up because we're trying to get it up as fast as possible so that, like, all our viewership isn't going to watch the right, American the pages. American, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and our, like, publicity team, the Canadian publicity team, wants the Canadian links to the Canadian videos to use in the Canadian press blasts, and it's, like, this whole, like, big stressful situation, and I'm, like, oh, my God, my Wi-Fi is, like, not even working that well today. Like, what <laughs> yeah. am I doing? But, yeah, that I guess it, like, can be a bit time-sensitive, and that kind of stuff can yeah. be stressful, mm-hmm. but, yeah. <laughs> so you're working remotely then? At the moment, I'm working remotely okay. just because of COVID, but um, I will, I believe, be back in the office in the fall, which is in okay. Toronto. It's going to be so yeah. fun. Okay. Um, so what – you might not be – know the answer to this because you just have a job, but um, mm-hmm. what is, like, the difference, I guess, between, like, why is there a separate page for, like, Canada, Disney Plus, rather – or, like, yes. you know, Marvel rather than, like, the U.S.? Yeah, totally. Um, so there's a couple different reasons. One of the – biggest reasons is that well I don't know if this is the biggest reason but this is something we have to change every single time we get a trailer we use different spelling for a lot of words including mm-hmm. the word theater mm-hmm. which we use in like basically every single every, post yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like you guys spell er and we spell re so mm-hmm. that means we have to have custom um, content and captions for basically every single post so that's like huge 
Um, yeah. But there's a whole, like, like Disney Canada have, has an entire marketing office in Canada that markets to Canadians. Like, we market things differently. We run our own campaigns, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So I guess it makes sense that way that we have our own pages as well. Okay. Yeah, that makes that sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. All right. Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> Me like saying just a bunch of jumbled words. Um, okay. So what would be, I mean, I guess we've talked a little bit about like connections and the importance of connections, which we all know is kind of like a double-sided coin. Cause like it's hard to like kind of get your foot in the door if you don't quote yeah. unquote, have connections, but then also it can lead you to the best opportunities. Um, so what would be your advice for somebody who's wanting to get into social media management? Like, what do you think were the experiences that were like the most valuable to you that helped you with like what you do at Disney now? Yeah, that's a great question because I, like I said, I genuinely just feel so lucky that I knew someone who knew me. Like I didn't have any connections with Disney or anything previously. So even though I had a friend who had a friend who worked with the Disney team, like, I don't, I didn't know anyone personally, um, which does kind of make me feel like it was my skills, my interview that really, like, sealed the deal. Um, yeah. So, I guess the type of stuff that was really, I believe, beneficial to me, like, marketing myself as, like, a good person for this job, um, one of the things I showcased was that I can write copy, which is, like, writing captions for, in different brand mm. voices. So, mm-hmm. I talked Huge. about all the other previous social media stuff I've done and I tried to include like a wide range like I had done stuff for this company and I've done which is like a construction company or something and then I've done something for like a luxury yeah. fitness brand or whatever it's just so that like I could um demonstrate that I basically have like a breadth and can you have range. Um, encompass like any yeah brand voice yeah um yeah. so that was important um I made I wrote some notes um Oh, I also just because I have my own business and I've um, worked for other businesses, I already knew how to track analytics and use the data there to like yeah. extrapolate and show how that could be used in yep. a real life situation. Like anyone can use Instagram analytics and like, oh, I got a new follower and then whatever, whatever. But knowing how to kind of like apply it to a real life situation, I think is important. And again, this isn't stuff I necessarily learned in my degree. Like, it's just from trial and error yeah. and running my own business and that kind of stuff. So if people who listen yep. don't necessarily know how to do that, just, like, get your feet wet. Like, just jump in and 100%. play around. That's, and how, that I, kind of that's how I got my job right now. I didn't yeah. have any, like, formal social media, ex- like, experience. I really just – all I put on my thing was my own page and yeah. what I yeah. learned from doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, and then – I also just talked about how I basically like spend all my time online, which is not a good yeah. thing, but I'm very like on top of what's <laughs> trending and that kind of stuff. And for a job that is looking for people to grow their page and mm-hmm. be on top of social media trends, trends like yep. demonstrating that you can like kind of either predict trends or jump on things quickly, like that kind of stuff is I think really valuable to bigger companies, especially like especially corporations, like, sometimes I say stuff that I think is an absolute no-brainer just because I, I just, like, am on TikTok or whatever, and people in my company who are, like, 50 are like, oh, my God, I never even <laughs> thought of that. And I'm yeah. like, do you know what the internet is? Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. So just demonstrating that you're, like, savvy and that kind of stuff on top of things I think is also, like, really good. That is so true. I have, like – no shade my, to the people at yeah, Disney. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. Imagine. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, this 50 year old on my team. No, my team's actually pretty young, but <laughs> yeah, my team at Eastwater is pretty young too. But even them, like, they're like in their 30s, and I like say something, and I'm expecting them to immediately know what I'm talking about, and they're like, yeah. what? I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah. Like an yeah, example I, mean, I was talking about was um, I was on TikTok and I saw a bunch of TikToks that people were creating um, makeup looks based on the movie Cruella, which we are doing a campaign for right then and there. And I was like, oh, we should share some of these TikToks to our Instagram story. Like, that would, like, be a really fun thing to do. You can share TikToks to Instagram? I'm like, yeah, it's literally built right into the app. You don't actually have to do anything. You literally just, like, and they're like, oh, my God, that's genius. I'm like, thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, I feel like the user generated content is probably insane for a company mm-hmm. like Disney, which that is like just my social media dream because user generated <laughs> content is the coolest content. It's, yeah, um, it's so much. Yeah, but, the hardest yeah, like, thing though, working for a big company, is there's so much legal liabilities. You can't just like instantly share something oh. to your story. There's so much like legal stuff you have to jump through and like get permissions for. So. That is a little bit of a roadblock on things like that. That would stress me out. Um, I feel like something else that's important that you sort of mentioned is like, you know, somebody knew you and mentioned your name. And I think that something that I hear a lot, at least in my DMs and sometimes we get in the podcast DMs, is like people being afraid to connect their name or their face with their account, especially if they're Mm -hmm. like younger or like if they are just insecure, especially like a lot of people who started like art accounts in quarantine and like just do it for fun or whatever. Nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah, And like you don't want to connect your face. Um, I think down the line, it can be like really, really important. Of course, it's important in its own way for branding and connecting Mm -hmm. to your audience and stuff. But I think like engaging and stuff. Yeah. Like talk to your friends about what you do. Like, you know, make like talk to your parents about what you do. My parents totally I've told them about 3000 times and I still think they don't understand. But like, yeah, yeah. um, like make it known, be proud of like your skills and stuff. Talk to your exactly, professors no. and stuff. I'm like, really lucky that yeah. my family and my friends and that, those kind of people in my life are like really excited about what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. I just, I guess like not many of my friends and family are doing anything in this kind of field. So it's kind of like yeah. exciting to them that I'm like on this weird creative mm-hmm. journey or whatever. So whenever and I get so many of my friends, hey, this person just posted on their story they're looking for a graphic designer like people my friends like send stuff like that Mm -hmm. to me all the time and I'm like I can't even do all this stuff but I appreciate it (laughs) yeah I feel like freelance graphic design during COVID like really jumped a lot and I feel like graphic design and social media management just in and of itself is something that seems so new Mm -hmm. it's not but like it seems very new to people like there's not a lot of people that you just like go up to someone like oh I'm a social media manager like it's not mm-hmm. very common so yeah. I feel like people get so much more excited when their family member or friend is doing that that's been so. um really interesting for me to see because I have had my design business for years and mm-hmm. I guess it kind of more turned into a business like a real business in the past two years but I mm-hmm. always had a page for I was always doing the same stuff and yeah, it definitely has been interesting because, like I said, I've always been on Instagram, but now it's booming with people who do what I do. And that's yeah. not a bad thing. Like, maybe it's more competition for me or whatever, but it's also, like, just really cool to see this, like, community growing and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I, right. I probably would never have met you guys without that, right. yeah. those kind of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, well, well, if we're talking about freelancing, sort of in that topic <laughs> – um, how do you balance your freelance work with your job at Disney? Like you said, you're working full time, but also keeping up your brand and kind of staying active and keeping yourself like in people's minds, even if you can't accept as much work as you yeah. used to. Yeah, you literally just hit the nail on the head because I was going to say, to be honest, I'm not handling it super, super well. Like, I don't want to sit yeah, here and either. be like, oh my God, I'm killing it. <laughs> um, but my kind of like personal goal at the moment even though I've slowed down on accepting clients is to just keep active on my page so that when the Mm -hmm. time comes that I am ready to accept more clients, I'm still like at the top of people's minds and I haven't lost all my engagement. Um, so I don't know like how much people actually pay attention to my feeds, but like when I was, cause in the last fall I was freelancing full time when I was living in Toronto, I didn't Mm -hmm. have another job. I was just doing full time freelance, which was so fun and I loved it. But especially during COVID, it was like pretty lonely and I kind of was looking for a work environment that would be more collaborative and that kind of stuff. Um, but my feed was filled with my own work that I'd done for clients. It was logos, it was brand kits, mood Mm -hmm. boards, whatever. And now it's, kind of not so much but it's not because I don't like I would love to keep posting that kind of stuff but I just don't have the material that I did before so I'm kind of leaning more towards like graphics and I don't even know just like aesthetic photos and that kind of thing just so I keep up my engagement and that kind of stuff um another thing I'm trying to do is kind of because I still am accepting some clients I'm just trying to kind of pick and choose ones that Mm -hmm. will provide yep. higher value so I'm kind of looking for yeah. clients that are More willing purposeful. to 
pay more and I'll do a bigger yep. project for them, but I'll take on less of those than taking on like a million hundred Little dollar projects. projects or something like that. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. I think that's a really good point too. Like this is just a general piece of advice. You don't have to accept every client. <laughs> and when you're in a position like you are where you don't have as much time, it's just much more beneficial to you even just to build your portfolio and stuff to accept clients that you like and that are going to pay higher because otherwise it is not feasible you know yeah totally I also feel like I've had to kind of come to terms that it's okay to like step back from this I think you guys were mentioning it in one of your previous podcasts but just like with this whole boom of COVID everyone had nothing but time on their hands so Mm -hmm. of course they were like killing it with their online business but now that the real world is opening up I'm like okay I have a great job I'm about to move to the city and be with my friends like I'm not gonna want to sit down yeah I don't have time to the whole yeah. time like I'm just not going yeah. to and that's okay like I'm gonna be yeah. yeah like hopefully you know fingers crossed living my best life in the city yeah working this job that I'm really excited about and like that's okay too you know yeah exactly 100 percent. I think that's a very good point could not have said it better myself um okay so should we move on to some random questions we had ellie come up with our questions with us so they're ellie themed yeah let's do it ellie themed okay. oh yes my favorite <laughs> have to love it okay so the first one is who is your favorite youtuber okay my favorite youtuber i'm obsessed is gretchen garrity and i feel like we're soulmates like i swear I love her and I think she's like the happiest and I don't know. She's my favorite. Do you guys watch her? It just it cut it off. Cut, for us yeah, it cut out who was right in, when you oh, said shoot. who it was. It oh, won't cut shoot. out on your end, but okay, it just I'll, cut I'll out. I'll just on the start end. that part again and you guys can like cut it or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um my favorite YouTuber is Gretchen Garrity. Yes. And I don't know oh, if you guys yep. watch mm-hmm. her videos, but I love her. I've watched her for years and I feel like we also especially in university, we're, like, doing the same stuff all the time. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh, we're yeah. literally soulmates. Follow we do along. the exact same thing mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. We're both high energy and spunky and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I just love her videos. They're so motivating yeah. and, like, She's happy. so, like, positive. She has, like, the mm-hmm. just, the, like, always smiling so big. I love her. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we always do that. Um, oh, okay, my God. I- I'll go. Okay. Um, so I have so many favorite YouTubers, but I'm going to go with the Canadian theme and say Curtis Connor because I just Ooh, I thought you were going to say Cody Co. <laughs> oh, I love you don't Cody know who You don't know who Curtis Connor is? Oh, my God. No. Okay, you're going to have to watch some of his videos. He okay. is He's similar so to, like, a Cody Co. kind of vibe. Like, he does, like, the same, like, commentary kind yeah. of, okay, like, videos. Okay, loves Cody Co. Yeah, so. so you would love yeah. Curtis. And Curtis has a podcast. I listen to his podcast every week. Um... But he's, like, most common, like, with just, like, regular commentary videos. Um, but, yeah, I also have a crush on him, so. <laughs> Alexis sent me, like, this picture of him, and she was like, look how hot. I was like, okay, Curtis, if you're listening, which you're not, no shade, but I don't think he's hot at all. Like, okay, but at isn't there all. something to be said that if a guy's, like, hilarious, that he's way more attractive? Yes. Like, Cody yeah, Coe yeah. is yes. not really attractive to me, but yes. I'm, like, so attracted to him because he's hilarious. That's yes. the same, like. Cody used to be so attractive to me, but now it looks like he doesn't wash his long hair correctly. Yeah, he- and I'm like, Cody, you have to get like some function of beauty or something. Like this is gross. Literally. Like you have to wash your hair. Anyway, um, I watch so many like different like sections of YouTube. Um, but I think my all time go to favorite is Brooke Michio. She oh just, yeah, like, she's my yeah my other fave. Yeah, love um, she just like lives in New York and like is living her best life and I don't know she's just very like authentic and I love Brooke vlogs makes me and that's feel like, like if I met her in real life we'd be best friends yeah yeah I'm like mm-hmm. I want to go out and drink skinny margs with you in New York it's- I know yeah and she's very just like she's just like a 20 something who's literally and she's yeah. single I like watching people who are single because I'm single so it makes me feel better about myself um but yeah love she that. just like does like long vlogs and I just like turn them on and like mm-hmm. do my work so love her me too mm-hmm. she's the best she is the best. Um, okay, next random question is, what is your favorite Disney movie? Go ahead, Ellie. I I came up with this question, but I didn't think of an answer. Um, okay, my favorite, like, stuff that I work on, like I said before, are Marvel movies. I'm, mm-hmm. like, kind of a freak about that. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but I just love them so much. 
Um, so, like, I love the Avengers and Spider-Man and stuff, but I guess mm-hmm. my favorite actual Disney movie, I guess this is Pixar, but I love The Incredibles. That's probably my favorite, like... I love The Incredibles, too. Animated Disney movie vibe. Love that mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Oh, my God, that is embarrassing. I'm like, yeah, The Avengers, and then also that other superhero movie, The Incredibles. <laughs> like, can I come up with something oh new? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. The Incredibles is just Avengers Light for like kids. Literally. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god. Literally. That's oh my so god. funny. <laughs> Meme content for you. I love yeah. it. Wait. Katie, swear to god I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna use it. I'm Here's, like following I'm like sure. the Disney Canada accounts. Oh my god, everybody go follow Disney Disney Plus C A, Marvel Studios Canada, Disney Studios Canada, and Twentieth Century C A. Those are the complicated handios. usernames. Go follow. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm Have seriously writing okay. that down for meme content. Avengers Light. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um. Okay, so my favorite Disney movie. Cl- my favorite Disney like classic is Cinderella because that's like always been my favorite princess. Um, but I would say my favorite Disney movie, just in general, Maleficent. I love Maleficent. That's a good one. Like, so much. I've actually never seen yeah. that. Yeah, the like the live action. They have two of them, and they're both so good. Like both, mm. very, like usually like the second is like not as good, and I genuinely think the second is almost even a little bit better. I've heard that about Ooh. Maleficent. I think I've only watched I'll the first one like it. on a plane, but um, yeah, you have to watch it. <laughs> you have to. You have to. <laughs> well, there's some like I. I obviously, like, watch a lot of movies, but I was never a huge, like, Disney princess person growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never been to Disneyland. Like, none of that kind of stuff. So, I sometimes feel, like, out of the loop of my own team. I'm like, oh, never seen that one. (laughs) I haven't seen so many Disney movies. Like, I've never seen Snow White. I've never seen Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Um, My favorite, like, classic princess Disney whatever movie is um, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, and then a a classic. my favorite Marvel movie is Captain America Civil War. Yes, that one's so good. Yeah. I okay, um, I feel like I have to redeem my answer. I've been thinking about it. Oh my and my favorite Disney princess movie is probably Tangled because I love that. I love Tangled too. That's that was really my that was my other option for what my regular well, I guess I and a princess. And also, so. I have to say, like, probably one of my favorite movies of all time is High School Musical, which is a Disney property. Yes. So I'm going to yeah. say High School Musical as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Alexis. Which High School Musical? All of them. Okay. <laughs> one. If I had to pick, oh, I guess one, but. One, yeah. Love it. I, so Alexis, I get to work you... on um, High School Musical, the musical, the series. And I'm like, <laughs> if my, like, 12 year old self knew that I was working on, yeah. like, a, a on High School that. Musical thing, I would be, like, freaking out. <laughs> So I funny. still am freaking out, and I'm 24. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Love it. Alexis, do you watch Marvel? Have you watched Marvel movies? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I just, like, every time, like, I, so I saw the order that I saw them in. This is going to make everybody, like, cringe. I saw Infinity War first of any, any movie. <gasps> Katie. And then Good. I saw Endgame. And Good. then I watched everything else, including Good. all of that. And then oh now I'm watching gosh. things in order. But I just watched, saw Black Widow. And then I watched, started WandaVision after I saw Black Widow. Because I didn't even realize, like, Wanda. I don't yeah. have Disney Plus. So I, like, didn't even realize that it had come out. Um, yeah. And then, so I stole my friend's Disney Plus, And I'm watching WandaVision. And then I'm going to watch Low Key. Low Key but, is a mind trip. So get get ready. That's yeah, what my, my whole, roommates, that's like our current campaign that we're doing right now at work is Low Key. Yeah, my roommates are watching it and isn't it is it 6 episodes? Is it almost yeah. done? Okay. It yeah. just finished yesterday. Yeah, I need to I don't like watching things like week by week cuz I don't like to not know. So like I usually yeah. wait for things to finish and then watch them. Yeah, fair. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, so I watched Marvel all out of order, but every time a new thing comes out, I get like reinvigorated in my like Marvel obsession so like after Black Widow I've already watched Black Widow three times it, so. it was really good I liked it <laughs> yeah people it simply who are came listening out to this like and don't ago. care about Marvel are probably like this like, podcast Jesus, is stop. only well, about Canada a lot of and what Marvel Katie and I that I mean it's not it's not about Marvel but we usually go on long tangents of things that yeah. people don't care about so I mean maybe, so, maybe we'll be sure surprised by people Absolutely have yeah, to If you're it. listening to this um, podcast, go comment what your favorite superhero is on the newest post. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go find the meme about <laughs> the Avengers and um, 
the Incredibles and comment on that. I'm going to make it happen, pod. I promise. I love that. That's so funny. Um, okay, so do you want to go ahead and plug your Instagram, your personals? You already plugged all your Disney people's stuff. Um, <laughs> I, just won't pl- tell people. I won't plug the Disney again. <laughs> um, um, tell people how they can find you. Yeah, my uh, design Instagram is Ellie Lap Creative. Ellie is E-L-L-Y. Lap is L-A-P-P. Um, and my personal is linked in that bio or it's just Ellie Lap 26. Um, I don't really have much else to plug my YouTube channel, I guess. The link is in one of my bios, I think, but I don't really, really do that too much. Um, that's kind of it. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming yes, on. Yes, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank we you, were, guys. This has been so much fun. fun. I really appreciate you having me. Yes, of love course. it. Um, all right. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to leave us a rating and review on wherever you listen to your podcasts and subscribe to keep up with our weekly episodes. And then follow us on our Instagram account, Check Your Aesthetic Podcast, our TikTok, which is Check Your Aesthetic, and yes. our personal accounts, Katie Creative Co., AlexisAdams.co, and Alexa, or that's my <laughs> Alexis. <name>. And Alexis <laughs> twice. Follow me twice. Um, and Ellie Lab Creative. And we will talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.